Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a deep dive into Benny, which is the sales associate, the virtual sales associate we're building inside Foundry. Uh, if you didn't catch the full system demo that we did with Ranger Data, I'll leave a link in the description. But the basic flow is um, we wanna be able to work with our partner network extremely rapidly leveraging AI. Uh, so what we did was we developed a sales agent uh, in Foundry uh, using Xreason, which is our, frame, our agentic framework and Ranger used AIP logic on their side. And we're able to essentially in natural language say things like, hey, Benny, get me an RFP from North Slope and Ranger data uh, for a tariff uh, pricing solution. And it's gonna be three weeks, it's gonna start on June 1st, it's gonna require three TypeScript engineers, two data scientists and ML engineers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just like you would describe it to a human being. We turn that into a state machine uh, that could be run with a Saga orchestrator, meaning it can essentially wait for multiple distributed systems to perform their work and call back into Foundry. And then we use LLMs to reason about the next best action to perform based on the responses from the vendors. And in this case, in the demo, uh, we showed the, the LLM reasoning about um, missing information. So Ranger uh, responded like, hey, in order to create this RFP for you, I need a valid start and end date for the project. Benny would reason that you know we it should await um, you know the missing information coming in from the sales agent, and then we would su supply that information. And the agent would move on, resubmit the RFP, and then we'd get back a fully contracted RFP with the contract and everything in an email. So today I'm just going to do a deep dive on that and walk through the technical aspects of how we achieved this. We're going to go into X Reason and our Foundry Functions repo, so you can see how it works. We're gonna step through code. So basically, I'll show you the same prompt we used in the demo, but this time we're gonna actually step through the code execution so you can see the transformation from the input text into a well-formatted solution, into a state machine, and then, and then this orchestrator that we built for Foundry that leverages the ontology, does the actual orchestration and waiting for all vendors to respond, et cetera, et cetera. So get ready, strap in, and let's dive into Benny. All right, so real quickly, let's just take a look at the ontology that we're using to power this demo. Uh, we have a memory recall object, which we're constructing from our comms pipeline. Uh, in Foundry, we essentially ingest all of our email communications, slacks, meeting transcripts, and that's building up um, a daily briefs object that we use in this memory recall. And it's sort of like a summary of everything that is coming through that day and we create those summaries multiple times a day, and it contains lots of rich information for the model to recall when it's trying to reason about, hey, Dorian's been talking to this guy, John Bohm, over at Ranger Data a lot about an RFP. I think this is the RFP that he's referring to, and he says, hey, you know, I need to, I need to resubmit this RFP over to, to Ranger. So this is containing a lot of valuable grounding data, what we call grounding data for the LLM. Uh, we also have our daily briefs objects, which primarily used in our workshop application. Um, it's actually over here. I could probably show you a brief one. It contains a daily brief for us on um, all the communications going through our emails, meetings, slacks, et cetera. It's all stuff we haven't read and items we need to follow up on. So that's what's in there. Uh, and then the consolidated, <clears throat> excuse me, consolidated columns task. We're not using that, something for a future uh, date. Uh, but our communications we are using, this is like the raw um, uh, communication structured data. Um, so like we produce a structured data set from all this unstructured data. Uh, so like when all the emails come in and all of the Slack messages come in, they wind up in this structured data set so that everything's in a common format. So regardless of the communication source, whether it's a user communication or whether it's coming in from email or Slack or wherever, we structure it into a common format, which is this communications ontology object. And then we have our uh, contacts, which are used obviously to fill in contact information. And then we have our communications training data, which is, I'll show you that later on in the demo, but it's how we perform in context learning. So the model knows how to do things like send emails, send RFPs, um, you know, schedule a meeting, do all these other kinds of things. That's where all the training data lives. Um, so that's it. That's the foundational ontology for Benny. And just to ground us in the architecture and the workflow, um, this is the rough architecture. This is our stack over here, our Foundry stack. This is the Ranger Foundry stack. Benny is, again, it's a um, X reason that we have built with the X reason framework inside Foundry. It's in TypeScript functions, all open source. I'll show you that at the end of the video where you can check it out on GitHub. Uh, but 
basically the first step is the solver process. We have a uh, set of in-context learning data we use for um, Gemini Flash 2.0 that we teach it how to create well-formatted test lists, which I'll show you an example of in a second. We teach it how to write a program in a special DSL we wrote that keeps the token count low and accuracy high. And then we use our interpreter for Foundry to orchestrate it all across all these systems. In this case, it's Ranger and North Slope. And then uh, we have our ontology object that's persisting the state of the application when we pause and we're waiting for work to be done. Uh, and we send the RFP request out to Ranger as well as the rest of our network. And then we get back the response. So that's the basic architecture. Now let's dive into the demo. All right, so we're gonna step through some code. Let's go ahead and get this rolling. Just so you know, this is the same prompt we use in the demo. Uh, the only, it's missing the required um, email address for this person. So we're gonna go ahead and hit run and debug. And um, what will happen is Ranger will reject this. I have a um, small app I wrote over here uh, that monitors the incoming RFP requests. So what you'll see once this thing gets actually submitted is um, a new one from Ranger and then we'll monitor the status over here and we can see when um, you know, it gets rejected for the missing information. Right now, what's happening in the background is the model is creating a well-formatted task list from the input prompt. And so if we go to the breakpoint here, we can see we have our task list and I believe it's been outputted over here. One second, let me just get rid of this. Uh, yes, so you can see um, the model has spit out this uh, task list and it loves to introduce itself. <laughs> Uh, but it's saying that it needs to create an RFP for North Slope. Uh, it's got the deliverables highlighted. It also needs to create an RFP for Ranger. You'll notice also that um, the model is filled in the vendor IDs by itself. I didn't have to specify those. That's part of that grounding process that's using the memory recall object. We have a special recall function we wrote that works with the ontology. We do a combination of vector search and string matching. And then we let an LLM pick relevant information based on the injected context. And that's how it's uh, managing that. Uh, you can see it's calling out the timeline and then it's gonna write an email uh, and send it to me uh, once it's done, once both responses have been received. So now that we got this like well-formatted task list, uh, the next thing it needs to do is write the program, right? And this is where our domain-specific programming language comes in. Um, the domain-specific programming language is a JSON struct. It's meant to be lightweight. Uh, and you can see here the programmer has um, sent back the state machine. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a very lightweight, not verbose JSON. It gives each state an ID. It determines uh, what can be parallel. And in the case of submitting RFPs, these are parallel states, meaning they execute together. They're not, this one's not waiting for the other to finish before execution starts. Uh, we have both RFPs for Ranger and for North Slope. We have the await state, which is going to wait until um, all of these responses have been received. And then after that, it's going to send an email and we're good to go, right? So that's the basic state machine um, structure, the DSL. And if you want to learn more about this, we're going to have documentation in the open source project. If you're a developer, you're going to want to kind of master this DSL. It's very simple. But what you'll be doing is using our tools and automation to like build synthetic training examples to distill small language models that can produce this. Now we use Gemini Flash 2.0. I'd love to start making even smaller variants that um, are domain specific, like for example, for sales or for email or whatever, that know how to both create the task list and spit out this, this custom DSL. Now that that's done, uh, we're gonna continue letting this thing execute. Once execution is done, we're gonna monitor the status over here in our um, app. And you can see here is where it's sending the RFP request. Let's see what it's doing. Looks like it's doing some tracing. We, we add some tracing uh, in here. Um, I'll show you where that's used as well in a little bit. But uh, you can see here is our new request um, from Ranger. Let's see if Ranger has responded. Uh, right now it hasn't responded with the missing information. It's just said that, okay, we've got your submission. We're working on it. That's what this response uh, according to Ranger means. All right, so now we got the response back from Ranger. As you can see, they're saying, all right, I'm missing the following information. Make sure that it's all supplied for me. Um, in the demo, you see where we use the threads execution object where um, the agent in the field would literally type in uh, the actual missing information. So when this response comes back in the field, go, again, going back to the demo, and I, I'll leave a link in the description, you'll see how the mobile application sends this information over to the agent they see an update in their, their chat window that this is missing, they can respond with the missing information. 
then that puts this in to a resubmission process. And what we're gonna do just to step through the code is, is do the submission process so you can see what's happening under the hood. Um, and again, watch the full demo. Uh, I, I'll leave a link in the description because it's really cool to see that mobile app updating uh, with this information and letting a human on the other end supply it and then this workflow kicking back off. But we're gonna assume that's already happened and what we're gonna simulate is a valid response from uh, Ranger for this um, machine execution. The, now the machine execution ID is the thing that links all this together. It links the threads for the communication that's going on between the agents and the humans. It's linking the state machine execution that needs to be rehydrated and orchestrated. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna step through the code and we're also gonna look at our orchestrator because our orchestrator for Foundry, which is over here, um, does some neat LLM transition logic. So we're gonna set a breakpoint where the code can stop um, right at the um, engine's transition function. So in here, we have in our X reason engine, a logic transition, a logic gate effectively. And um, so we're gonna set a breakpoint there so the agent, you can see the agent's reasoning about what to do next. So let's go ahead and kick that off. All right, so we are paused right now in the submit RFP state. This is a webhook we created for our vendors to call back into. We've done a little bit of classification. We've had a model classify um, what the response is. Is it a valid response? Is it a request for missing information? Is it an error? We classify that into response status after the model is classified what the response is. Now we're gonna push through it saying, all right, this looks like a valid response. I'm gonna go ahead and submit that. And now the state machine has been rehydrated with this new information, right? We've updated the context inside the state machine. If you're, you're unfamiliar, state machines already natively support a context, which includes all of the stuff that's happened already in the machine. Um, and I can, you know, when we do a deep dive in X reason, uh, when the open source release comes out next week, you'll see more examples of what I'm talking about here, but just understand there is a attribute in this JSON blob that contains everything that's happened to date and it can the model can reason then about what to do next. So we're gonna go ahead and let the model reason about the next state that it should pull up. And you'll see the model's reasoning here in the debug window. It says the current state is awaiting RFP. Okay, yep, that's right. It means the application is waiting for responses. The context shows that um, the, uh, Vendor North Slope has received, hasn't received it yet. They're still waiting on North Slope's RFP response. Therefore, the current state is just to continue to wait, which is totally correct. That's exactly what we wanted to do. But that's what the this reasoning step is doing here in the interpreter we wrote for Foundry. And it's very important that you that you have some capability like this where you know, these workflows, they can't just happen all at once. They need inputs from a lot of other places, which means you need some native ability to pause an execution, rehydrate it later, add the new information the external system is coming back with, and then figure out the next best action based on that. And our framework fully supports that out of the box, and you can build lots of um, domain-specific reasoning models distilled uh, that will help you in improving accuracy for particular lines of business. So we're gonna go ahead and just continue stepping forward. Let's keep going. Uh, let's just get to the end here, perfect. Uh, now what's gonna happen is it's gonna serialize everything out, save it back to the ontology. And now what the model's doing is waiting on um, the data from North Slope. And let's just go ahead and grab the North Slope's ID. I gotta copy it over here. So now it's sim simulate actually sending North Slope's response. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna, it's gonna again, rehydrate that ontology. It's gonna see that North Slope has submitted and then the model will effectively reason, okay, you know, again, it's classified the response correctly. This is a valid response. We have to, we do provide some training data for the model to know what valid responses look like. Um, now it's gonna run that transition logic gate again and it's gonna reason that, okay, both of these have been um, submitted. So here again, the model is reasoning about, okay, North Slope and Ranger have submitted, therefore the transition in the next task should be writing the email, which is correct. It's gonna write the email and send it over to me and I'll show you um, that email coming through. We do have um, all these integrations will be part of, are in Foundry Developer Foundations today. So if you wanna send emails through G Suite or send Slack messages or schedule meetings, all that code's open source today. I'll leave a link in the description. You can see exactly how we do it. Um, so really, really cool stuff here. Lots of advanced integrations with G Suite and Slack uh, that we've already created for you as a, as a jumping off point so you can build similar type of solutions. All right, all done. Now let's just see the moment of truth. Did I actually get the email from Vicky? Yay, I got it, sweet, there it is.
all right, got my email. There's my North Slope RFP response. There's my Ranger RFP response. What's interesting to note too is Ranger has actually sent a PDF over to Connor, who's our sales guy. And well, he's not our sales guy. He's our CEO. <laughs> so I'm just the lowly CTO. Uh, no, uh, but he's he's actually got a PDF emailed to him with all the contract details filled in as well. So like the customer could literally sign that agreement right this second, which is freaking awesome. So our goal, you know, one of the biggest challenges Palantir faces right now today is the lack of talent in the marketplace that are experts in Foundry. And so our goal at CodeStrap, we're all about enablement. We want to connect this network of experts, um, uh, the, the boutique firms like Foxtrot and Fourth Age and North Slope and Ranger, you know, all these boutique, ex you know, a lot of them founded by ex-Palantir people, ex-Palantirians, we wanna connect them into a never before seen consortium that can operate super fast because we use the technology we sell. And by doing that, we can actually help do things that weren't possible before, because when you have this really fragmented ecosystem of fractured talent, as the, because we haven't you know, matured into an ecosystem, by the way, why I was telling Palantir to build a developer community all the way back in 2021, because if you are successful, the worst thing to have happen is you can't meet market demand because you're trying to shore up the talent gap. Part of what we're trying to do here is ensure that we do shore up that talent gap, we operate faster, we use AI to solve a fragmentation problem, we believe we have the solution here to do that, and we're really hoping to leverage this in the coming weeks with Palantir to actually start kickstarting some things for customers so they can engage faster, they can find the resources they need, and costs can start to come down, especially as this, this network matures and more and more people enter it and become partners in our consortium, uh, and then the talent pool you know, will naturally start to expand. All right, thanks for sticking in there till the end. Uh, and as I was saying, Foundry Developer Foundations is available on GitHub today. It officially launches next week. It's still kind of a work in progress, but most of the code is stable now. You do not have to be a Foundry developer to contribute. Um, all of the code you saw in the demo is there today and you can check it out. Um, when you submit your PRs, there's this test directory, all the tests will have to pass. Uh, there aren't that many of them currently today. Uh, and also I'll be doing a P, uh, pull request review, but you don't actually need to be a Foundry developer to come in and you'll notice when you start looking at the code that we use dependency injection with Inversify to manage all of the Foundry dependencies. And there are no private packages, so you don't need a Foundry access token in order to NPM install and get up and running. Um, just NPM install, NPM test, and then you can run build and lint. Um, I haven't hooked Husky up for pre-commit checks. I'm going to be doing that soon. So like when you commit, before you can even commit, it will run the, uh, lint, the static code analysis, essentially. This is, and we, we have GitHub workflows and actions integrated in here. It's all part of the pull request pipeline. So, you know, we're, we're working to make this a true first class repo. Uh, so check it out. Um, I'm really looking for contributors. I want people to learn X reason and learn how this system works. Because like I said, in the future, what I'm building are essentially code generators, a mix of code generators and AI to rapidly build and assemble an actual X reason from just a chat interface, which is really cool. And like an actual X reason only consists of these files. You know, it's like these five files, essentially you can create any X reason that you want. And so we think there's a huge opportunity here to create um, sort of a pre-trained agentic workforce that works off of our foundational ontologies and Palantir's foundational ontologies that are being released. Because while a data model itself isn't valuable, a data model with a pre-trained AI workforce is insanely valuable. So that's all I got today. Uh, stay tuned for the launch of Foundry Developer Foundation's teaser trailer dropping, I think, later this week, and then the full release later next week. Thank you so much. See you soon.